When it comes to the city of Milwaukee, you think of the Milwaukee Bucks, music festivals, and other well-known artifacts. But did you know there's a fair share of unique black-owned businesses throughout the city? That's where we take a look at three most popular black-owned businesses, a barbershop, a restaurant, and even a plant shop, which makes this episode Black-Owned Milwaukee Inside Look. Since the year 1995, this significant black-owned barbershop and beauty salon known as Jade Clippers has been known for years, not just in the city of Milwaukee, but in the Midwest, located on historic 22,000 Dr. Martin King Drive. Here's the story behind Jade Clippers and what it has to offer to the Milwaukee community. My background before I um, uh, founded Jeez Clippers was, uh, I was a, um, I worked for the U.S. Postal Service downtown. I wasn't a, uh, wasn't a mail carrier, but I worked in the plant uh, downtown on St. Paul. I worked there for roughly two years. Prior to that, I worked at a fiberglass plant in Menominee Falls. Uh, I was 21 when I decided to go to school for barbering and cosmetology. Um, but I had been cutting hair, you know, for years prior to that. I grew up in a household with five brothers and one sister, so um, uh, that's quite a bit of money for your parents to be sending six boys to the barber shop every other week. So one of us had to pick up the trade. I'm the first uh, barber in my family history, actually. I picked up the trade, you know, just cutting myself, to be honest with you. And I have one brother younger than me. He trusted me to cut his hair. And of course, any all the fellas in the neighborhood, you know, was at our house all the time because there were so many boys living in the house. So. Had a lot of practice with them. So uh, it wasn't until I was 21 years old that I decided to make it out of a career. And that's why I went to Barber McCall Metallurgy School. What do I enjoy most working at G's Clippers? I think, um, you know, creating a platform for individuals to uh, expound on their gifts. Um, I, I really find a lot of joy in helping, in helping uh, develop people, helping uh, individuals grow. Um, just helping people in general, you know, even the community, you know, not just the individuals that work at G's Clippers, you know, but I just enjoy, you know, just uh, being a blessing to other individuals. I mean, I love it. It's a, it's a family vibe, you know, it's, uh, it's very open to all type of different events, people. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely a life changer, you know what I mean? Because you, you meet a lot of different people and you, you tend to learn things that you never knew. So it's, it's awesome. Man, uh, mainly just, you know, I, I love cutting hair. I love the calamity with the people. I love interacting with people. I love different conversations. You know, just the different vibe, the scenery. So that's, that's my main thing. What was my experience like finding, founding G's Clippers? My experience was, um, it was a pretty cool experience. I mean, it was definitely full of a lot of ups and downs because no one else in my family has ever owned a barber shop, and for uh, any business for that matter, at that at that time, and um, so it was a trial and error type of deal, you know. Um, uh, so I learned on the fly, if you will. So it was a lot of uh, ups and downs, like I stated, and uh, I think the biggest one was um, really learning how to truly delegate, learning how to trust other individuals, learning how to duplicate myself. I think that's every business owner's. Um, uh, goal is to duplicate themselves, just make their job that much easier, you know. But I would like to think that was that was my toughest uh, challenge. Cheese Clippers isn't just known for their haircuts and facial treatments. There are also plenty of other contributions they do here in the city of Milwaukee. What do Cheese Clippers have in store for the city of Milwaukee? Well, if you didn't know uh, already, you know Cheese Clippers have done so much in the community. Uh, so we plan to just continue doing what we've been doing. We've provided uh, uh, back to school haircuts and school supplies and, uh, for uh, underprivileged uh, uh, children and families. We've, uh, for years we've done that, giving uh, uh, toys for tots during Christmas to underprivileged uh, families, feeding families during Thanksgiving. Uh, we've um, helped get individuals out to vote, being a platform for uh, um, politicians to speak to their constituents for years. Now, uh, we've been a part of getting individuals uh, registered to vote. We've um, now, as of two years ago, opened G's MKE Wellness Clinic, which is unlike any other uh, barbershop in the country. We have a full health clinic in the barbershop, 
where one can come to G's Clippers and get their blood pressure checks, blood glucose level check. You can get the HIV exam here, uh, STI, STD uh, checks, uh, COVID vaccinations. Um, I mean, the whole gamut, you know, almost anything you can get done at a regular doctor's office, you can get done right here at G's Clippers. Um, you know, I, I just want to just continue being a blessing to the community that has taken care of, of G's Clippers for 27 years that we've been open now. And um, only the sky is the limit, you know. I mean, I got a hair product line coming out um, in June of this year. Um, shampoo, conditioner, and I'll just add products. Uh, after that, I, uh, I have a training program for individuals interested in entering the uh, barbering program. So it's a, basically, a, 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 my program will act as a feeder to your um, barbering and cosmetology schools in the city of Milwaukee. Living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin is awesome because the way the city is dynamically put, it's no other better feeling than working in a black barbershop because you know you get a lot of diversity and we're so open to it that I probably wouldn't want to work anywhere else. You know, I couldn't walk at a cross cutters or anything like that just because my people are, are my people. And you get a different type of association when you're working in a black environment. What's it like owning a black owned business um, in Milwaukee? I would think it, uh, it's a pretty much a lot like owning a white owned business in, in, in Milwaukee. Uh, with me not owning a white owned business, I mean, it's hard for me to really you know, uh, decipher, but at any rate, I think um, businesses are, are the same in terms of uh, just providing, a, you know, quality service, professional service. Uh, it has really been a, uh, a fun ride. I mean, I've been able to bless a lot of individuals, you know, through G's Clippers and, and, and it's not just myself. It's my team that truly believed in me, trusted in me and believed in my vision, you know, so uh, uh, owning a black owned business in the city of Milwaukee, I mean, I have honestly have not seen a lot. Cause you understand, I own a business that majority of black people uh, patronize, you know, so it's like, it's like home, you know, with me in this particular business, you know, so if I was in another type of business, providing another type of service uh, to the masses, although G's Clippers do get his fair share of, of non-black clients, you know, but uh, it really has been uh, to me, like uh, owning any other business if I, if, if I might say so myself. Man, uh, dedication, you know, um, timing, craft skills, um, and understanding how to be more of a listener than a talker, because you're more of a psychologist and a sociologist behind the chair than you are a barber. I think cutting is more 15% of the job and listening is more 85%. What is my advice to an individual that is uh, interested in owning on the barbershop, owning the barbershop. I would say, do your homework. Do your homework, you know, um, do your research. You know, in the age of, uh, of uh, Google and, and online, you can research so much online. Or if you know a successful barbershop in, in your area, you know, um, um, talk to the owner, see if they'll be open or willing to uh, give you some uh, insight on how they did it. You know, what was the ups and downs, the struggles that they may have, uh, uh, endured and uh, you know so you can learn from them uh, and make sure you got the capital the capital in place you know there's so many individual individuals that uh, that uh, go out of business much sooner than they really should have you know considering hey I mean <clears throat> barbershops in urban community at least in the city of Milwaukee barbershops the life expectancy is two years that tells me a lot a lot of individuals just not doing their homework not in doing, not doing their uh, due diligence uh, prior to opening up the doors, not having the correct capital. I mean, I think you should have at least six months or more of, uh, uh, of uh, capital, you know, to make sure you can take care of your, your, your overhead for some time because money don't just come right, right away. You know, it's a process. It's a process to it, you know. So I would definitely uh, recommend individuals really doing their homework, you know, creating a map, a road map, if you will, you know, because there's no way in the world you can drive from here to California, you know, without a GPS or a road map. You gotta have a road map. I mean, there's no way you can go from the inception of a barbershop to a successful barbershop without having some type of road map. You gotta write down, you know, your plan and make it plain on, on how you want your business to be perceived to the public and how you want to uh, service the uh, community and be a, uh, create a great stage for uh, your future barbers and stylists to perform on. Try it out, do it. I mean, 
any job that you that you see yourself doing that you set yourself out to you should always do the research and make sure that you want to do it have a passion for it and also understand that it's more about the person than it is you the money is good but you're, you're making a change with personal life image you know and personality so if you are good with those things then you should be a barber it'll be a good job for you from afro to high top or even a ball fade they do it all cheese clippers is an all-service barber shop and beauty salon that is a community favorite. They welcome and service all walks of life. I can smell the fresh cornbread from here. From Daddy's Soul Food and Grill, located in 754 North 27th Street, a black family owned business. They're known for its delicious food and warm hospitality in the city of Milwaukee. This dining restaurant has a strong inspirational story on how they got started. Um, Daddy So Food Real came from my daughter when I was approached to uh, start my re business here at this location uh, by the owner. Uh, we was, me and my wife was hashing over different names, uh, what would be a good fit for what, our, our food and our brand. And so my oldest daughter, Amber, she uh, said, how about call it Daddy's? And I said, hmm. And I said, wow, that, that fits. She said she wanted to come up, you know, commemorate my, my, her grandfather and my dad, who was a, a, a former chef, and as well as myself. And so I looked at daddy's, looked it up, no one took it. It wasn't, it wasn't being used, because we wanted to trademark it. So I wanted to go a little farther. I said, I wanted to do more than just a soul food restaurant. I wanted to, because my vision was to capture the whole family. You know, kids don't want to come eat a big old smother pork chop. They might want to have a burger or chicken and waffles or a lighter item. So. I want to do Daddy's Soul Food and Grill to kind of capture that whole family so that everybody can come to our restaurant and enjoy a meal all together. The food, soul food, you know, we have burgers and things like that on our grill, vegetarian options, but people mainly come for the soul food, the fried chicken, uh, meatloaf, pork chops, salmon croquettes on different days, so macaroni and cheese, yams, greens. Uh, do different items each day. Uh, to try to change the pace, like uh, on Tuesdays, we have the barbecue reels as our special, but baked chicken and fried chicken we have every day. And Wednesday is the meatloaf with mashed potatoes as a special, with baked chicken and fried chicken and catfish. Thursday is our smothered pork chops with the baked chicken, fried chicken and catfish. And Friday is the salmon croquettes with rice. And that's kind of like our fish fry, salmon croquette and rice and the catfish and then baked chicken, fried chicken, of course. And then Saturday is the barbecue ribs again because it's a high demand. And then Sunday is the day where we have everything, the bay chicken, the barbecue ribs, the meat, local mashed potatoes, some other pork chops, salmon, other than the salmon croquettes on Sunday, and uh, the barbecue ribs. My favorite part is the cash register because you get the upsell people at the cash register, right? So everybody like, oh, anything else? They got a plate, a meat, two sides? Got to get a Kool-Aid to go with it. Oh, you got a Kool-Aid? Got to get a lemon pound cake to go with it. Then boom, my sales go up. Next thing you know, I'm employee of the month. I love the people, really, um, the customers and the staff. The staff being a uh, half, not half, a little less than half a family, and the customers being just anyone in the city or in neighboring cities coming here from Racine or Chicago. Um, you'll see your pastor here, you'll see your barber here, just anybody, your old neighbor. And it's uh, always funny seeing people say, hey, I haven't seen you in a while, like in line. That'll happen like once or twice a week, just people like randomly linking up here. So I just love meeting new people, my regulars here, um, and the fact that everybody's so welcoming and warm. It's like being at your aunt's house. Well, what we wanted to bring is, uh, I was a, a type of person, whenever I go to a restaurant, I wanted to, See, people know me by my name. I want people to say, hey, Benny, how you doing? And when I want walk into a place, especially when I'm spending my money, I want to have a clean environment. Secondly, thirdly, I wanted to have good food, of course. So these three different things I wanted to bring as a brand to City of Milwaukee. Excellent food, customer service, which is quite frankly far in between because a lot of places you go, you kind of lose in a mix of the serving and the hustle and bustle you lose that customer service. You lose that rapport between the customers. And, and, and I watch our customers may not come back because they feel they might have been treated wrong or someone was said something wrong. I wanted to make sure that our, 
our, our, our brand here, being an African American uh, black establishment, we wanted to be a higher, uh, 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 if you would, uh, a, a higher uh, impact on customer service. When people came here, they wanted, I wanted them to leave knowing that I was treated, I was treated with respect, I, I was treated with manners. They, they, they remembered me. Uh, great customer service, and that's one of the things I wanted to bring as a staple, a part of that, that's connected with that is excellent customer service. I think that's very important because it, food may not be good, but people remember how they were treated. And to bring that in the city of Milwaukee when we are having such a, a volatile situation, uh, I see people come here eating, it's sort of like a safe haven. Daddy Soul Food and Grill isn't just known for their mouth-watering fried catfish. They recently opened a breakfast spot located in the Blue Mound area, where they serve and share some of their favorite home-cooked meals. What I wanted to do with um, that is on Blue Mound was it formerly used to be a George Webb, and a lot of people in Wauwatosa knew that uh, building as a breakfast spot, you know, a George Webb Cafe. And when we decided to go in there, I wanted to keep the nostalgia of George Webb, but also have my own daddy's flavor. So we kind of changed it up a little bit, a little the same seating, but I put some, uh, some wall coverings, some different pictures, a different feel to it, and we opened it up as our own breakfast, breakfast uh, location, which serves the uh, Mama's Down Home, which is the uh, catfish and uh, eggs the way you want it, hash browns and grits, and any type of bread, and then the Daddy's Down Home. And each item is named after my children as well, so same way here. We have a subcategory of my children as well as daddies on Blue Mile. So it's pretty much a breakfast location that we serve. We do have a limited item of lunch items and dinner items that we serve. That we, we put out at all the way from a.m. to 2. And you know, like me, a lot of people want to eat breakfast all day long. So we allow uh, to serve breakfast from 8 to 2 p.m. Um, knowing what you're working towards and what you're working for, because it is a black owned business and there aren't many of us and our reputation has to be so excellent in order to be, you know, on a certain standard with other regular restaurants or other corporations. So on top of being black owned, we're also a small business. So every day is all of us giving our all just to, you know, get by, especially with COVID, with staffing shortages. So um, I would say it's a lot of us pouring into each other. We're building into our community by um, employing people who are local, employing people who look like us, work like us. Even if they don't look like us, you know, they're in the neighborhood, they're part of our community. So we love on everyone who works here. We love on everyone who um, comes here. And we appreciate anyone who wants to grow with us. So I think being a part of a black owned business is really just the personal aspect of it. You know, we really care about our employees. We care about our um, customers because without either one, there wouldn't be us, you know. We couldn't do it without everybody who comes in here. Industry-wise, it's pretty much the same. It's like a, they, they run a tight ship around here, so it's not any less expectations from a black-owned than from a other business. When we, when we first opened the business, we, we just was pursuing our dream. We were pursuing something that people said we couldn't do. They said I couldn't open a restaurant on 20th and Wales, 27th and Wales, because of the crime, because of the drug infestation. People are not going to come down the 20th and 27th and Wales. Uh, I even had people tell me that I should put up petitions. But with my vision, I wanted, I didn't want customers to be served from behind the petitions. I feel we better than that. I feel our race is, deserves excellent service. We deserve a place where they can come with nice furniture, beautiful furnishings on the wall, excellent food. We deserve that. And to do that, I wanted to put my best forward. And being a black owned business, I felt that the stigma of a black owned business, we have to go and do more. Even our own race expect us to do more than any other restaurant because we are black owned. I was willing to meet that challenge. And to, to do that, not only me doing it, because it, was, it, it wasn't more from just to me to have that mindset, I had to have my employees on board that had the same mindset. When I'm not here, the business can still run with the quality of excellence that I, that I see in my vision. 
and it, uh, to be a black owned business it has a little pride to it because to have a, uh, a business that you have as a vision that that's coming to fruition that you see you have uh, celebrities coming here eating Kylie Jenner came in here Travis Scott came here and ate uh, Cedric the Entertainer came and sat and ate dinner and said give me seconds you know uh, I wish I can talk to you seconds. And him and his entourage came here and ate and it, it, it makes me feel it, it gives me a purpose to get up every morning and do the same thing because I don't know who's going to come to tomorrow but it's not about the celebrity it's about every customer that comes in this place I want them to feel the same experience as if it, they were a celebrity and that's my vision and I love doing it so to have a black owned business and to have a second one that's not in a that's in an area where it's predominantly Caucasian and they are welcoming us because they feel the vision they feel the sense of uh, purpose that we're trying to uh, portray that will make them come back like the day was just crazy you know <laughs> and it, it just it, it, it makes me feel really well the advice I would give people who wanted to open up a, a restaurant first of all know that you're in it for the long haul know that you're in this business not just to make a dollar it's, it's, it's not really about making money that's a byproduct money's gonna come you have to develop a rapport with your customers you have to know that your customers are gonna come back you're gonna create a a barrier to where they're not just gonna come and get a plate and not come again and if they don't come try to find out the reason why that 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 uh, rapport with that customer is a retention factor that they're gonna tell everyone else if one customer can mean 25 to 30 people coming into your doors I will tell you to make sure number two that you willing to work long hours of course and number three to make sure that if you open up a restaurant that you invest in your employees because I say it is and it's been said teamwork makes the dream work as much as I work as much as I believe in my dream I can't do it by myself I have to uh, display my dream I have to make sure that my employees have a buy-in to what I want and that they're uh, repeating or buying into the dream that I want to have because if, if your employees are not doing what you want them to do, then that's going to be uh, a hindering to your business. Loving, impactful, and passionate are one of many ways to describe Daddy's Soul Food and Grill. If you're having an empty stomach or looking to try something new, Daddy's is the right place for you to enjoy. Got a green thumb? Granite Plant Shop is the first brown and black owned plant shop in the city of Milwaukee. Located at 1739 North MLK Jr. Drive. This recently opened up shop started off from humble beginnings and made a big impact to the Milwaukee community. Miranda Plant Shop doesn't just have fresh organic plants to offer to the Milwaukee community. They also have their very own food truck called Tostada by Miranda that they recently opened up. If you got room in your front or even your backyard to make room for fresh native organic plants, Miranda's Plant Shop is the right place for you to check out. They're a very positive plant shop 
and welcomes fresh new faces to the city of Milwaukee. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have here. Thank you all for watching and tuning into Black on Milwaukee, Inside Look. Enjoy the rest of your day.